how long between hole in the last put on the last green in the playoff, how long in time was it from that to the third? <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a question I've always wanted to ask a tour pro and you have obviously had incredible uh, recent success so you, I reckon you'll give us a really good rep- representation now what happens when you win so you've won a tournament explain to me what actually happens like who's the first person you message how, how busy is your phone when you pick it up like after the ra- like what actually happens I'd love to know that yeah, it's a uh, it's a bunch of tedious stuff that you have to deal with, but obviously, it's it's a lot better when you've just won, and it makes it a lot easier to do. Uh, but uh, I mean, usually, um, if we take Dubai for example, um, I uh, finish up on the 18th green. Um, cameras first come in, and and uh, you have an interview right there and then, which you guys see. I saw that one. That, that's Richard uh, Bland's coach. Wasn't it? That yeah. Was... <laughs> and you very nicely apologized for beating Richard. And <laughs> I was the, that was a tough spot for him. Uh, I felt for him, but um, yeah. So, uh, but that's the first thing that happens, and then you kind of go uh, behind, uh, kind of where we sign the scorecards and stuff. And there's a little room. Um, sign a bunch of flags. Take a bunch of pictures. Um, um, like how many how many flag, kinda, how many flags do you sign straight away? For example, I probably a couple hundred flags. A couple uh, hundred. This is straight away. Uh, well, okay, maybe not straight away. It's first all the pictures and stuff with the guys from the tournament, all the sponsors, uh, and then I gave a little um, a little speech when I got the trophy, um, and uh, yeah, I just talked to some more people. Uh, and then we went and did all the signing stuff. It was a lot of back and forth and uh, might have been slightly intoxicated. So um, <laughs> I don't remember away. every single step of the way, but uh, it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of, lot of pictures. How long between How long between hole in the last put on the last green in the playoff, how long in time was it from that to the first beer that you had? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I, uh, I think we started off with champagne, um, nice. that Sunday, but, um, I, it probably took me a good three hours before I was back to my hotel and I properly celebrated with some of my friends and, and, um, and had a, had a nice late dinner. Um, so it was, uh, it was, a, a yeah, a long time in the golf course, but it was, uh, uh it was, uh. Yeah, easy, easy stuff. So, so you pick your phone up. You've just won. <laughs> like, who, who's who are you expecting on there? I'm guessing. Are you, do you see text messages and WhatsApps from everybody? Like everybody you've ever met is there on? Yeah, you know, who's, got, was, who's got there, your number? There's, there's a there's a lot of notifications on there. That's for sure. Um, it's a little. Um, I mean, obviously, my mistake, but. You know, when you get mess or notifications on Snapchat, Instagram, Messenger, Facebook, um, and obviously text messages, it's it's a little tough because some sometimes all the people that I know or some people that I don't know well have obviously a, a way to reach me, and that pops up pops up as a notification. But you know, if I want to talk to my mom and dad, it's kind of hard for me to go through all those notifications to find uh, that. So it just like, um, it's just, a, it's just a mess in there and it kind of takes me a while to, to go through all the messages and stuff, but I try to at least text my mom and dad as, as soon as possible when I get the chance and, and have a quiet moment. So is it like the next day when you sat there just going through them all, like reading all these text messages off everybody and replying to some of them, etc.? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the next day I flew direct from, uh, Dubai to Dallas uh, so I had a good 15 hours to run through some some messages. So that was uh, it worked out well. And how how hungover were you? I wasn't too bad. It wasn't okay. too bad. Okay, you getting used. I know getting, when to stop. <laughs> getting used to the champagne and winning. <laughs> I, I, I've always kind of wanted to know that that side of it because I always think as soon as it happens, like I, again, you don't have to answer this question. When does like the money go into your bank account? Like how quick is that, or is that a long process? 
Uh, I don't really know, but I, I don't know if it's different from the PP World Tour or the PJ Tour, but I think it's usually maybe the Wednesday after. Oh, really? That, so it's quite, so, quite yeah. soon? Yeah, it's pretty quick. So, um, yeah. This is the kind of thing where we were talking on the last podcast, Victor, about this Drive to Survive Formula One series and how it's shown you all the insights. Obviously, this year it's going to be on the PJ Tour. This is the exact kind of thing as like golf fans that you don't see and it sounds to you it's obviously things just like administration things but like to the to the average fan it's like you want to see what actually happens don't you they like can. when the golf cameras kind of get turned off i like i, I yeah. love I, I know the the dp world tour have done it a little bit more recently where they'll mic you up right when you're doing all the presentations and we get a glimpse of you speaking to like keith pelly or some of the marshals or some of the volunteers and i can't get enough of it so i just think it's fascinating it's all the things you don't normally see um, and do you do you enjoy obviously you've just won you, that's what you're out there to do you're out there to win do you enjoy all the media side of it do you enjoy all the interviews i know obviously we're doing a kind of podcast interview now so hopefully you don't say you don't not enjoy <laughs> absolutely it. hate it but like do you enjoy <laughs> even doing the speeches are you, are you quite used to that now like is that is that natural to you uh it's definitely not natural but it's it's something that i've gotten a lot better at um you just kind of it, and I think because uh, I, I, I'm an only child uh, and I grew up in Norway and especially in the winter, like you don't see a lot of people. Uh, you go to I would go to class. I would go and practice indoors for a couple hours and then I'm just home and I'm in the house for, um, you know, six hours every evening and then just get ready wait, uh, and just chill and wait to get ready for school the next morning. So like you're very protected in a way. Uh, so for me coming to Oklahoma State into college and you meet a bunch of donors, you meet people that are well connected and you have to actually be able to talk to people and and be able to represent yourself in, in a certain way. So that, that kind of got me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, and it's like that do get easier over time, but it's um, interviews and kind of speeches and stuff that it's not something that, uh, that I'm longing for or something that I absolutely need in my life. Now, Interviews like these are, are fine. Um, I enjoy them more because, you know, we don't have uh, – obviously, it's it's a longer form. We can actually go into stuff on a more detailed uh, – in more detail, and we can, frankly, just talk about anything. Um, so I, I enjoy that a lot more than just kind of, oh, how, how did you feel about your round today? Or, uh, wow, that was a nice eagle there. You know, talk about the chip in or – or whatever you know it just becomes pretty standard um so i enjoy these forms a little bit more but um usually all the stuff is a bit tedious <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> another, another one then from obviously you won the u.s amateur